up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Fresh RN Podcast. I'm Katie Cleaver, and we're going to continue our little series on communication tips. And we're going to talk today about difficult conversations. Um, so what is a difficult conversation? That could be um, maybe the patient's loved ones just had a meeting with the medical team and they found out that it's terminal. Um and they're done with that conversation and then you're talking to them. That would be a difficult conversation. Um, maybe something went wrong. Maybe something was missed. Maybe surgery didn't go so well. Uh, maybe a complication came up um, and they're asking you questions. What happened? What did we miss? What in the world is going on? Maybe their loved one died while they weren't there. Or um, maybe surgery got canceled and it, get, it has to get moved. Or maybe these labs didn't look right to go to surgery. Or maybe they're no longer a surgical candidate or there's only certain things we can do. Or that it's, you know, they found out that the stroke is life-changing and they're going to be in a nursing home the rest of their life. Or, um, you know, maybe there's, they have this diagnosis where they're going to, Need, it's going to be really expensive or, you know, these big life changing things. Unfortunately, that's a normal day at work for you guys. Um, we walk in and kind of put our regular life on pause and then kind of dive into the depths of these really traumatic experiences of other people. So empathy is really important, but also not providing so much that you kind of get lost in it. I think it's important to understand what they're experiencing, but not really try to take it fully on yourself because then it, it does overtake you and it makes it very difficult to provide um, your normal nursing care and go from patient to patient. But one of the ways I like to describe what they're experiencing is think back in your life. Have you ever had something very um, life changing occur? Um, maybe it, you know, maybe somebody that you know passed away and you found out about it. And it's those moments that you found out about it. Um, maybe a, a diagnosis that maybe they it wasn't a terminal situation, but it's it's changing everything. Um, finding out you were pregnant when you didn't mean to get pregnant. Um, <laughs> finding out. Maybe that dream of whatever, that relationship, that job, that whatever is no longer there anymore or something. And have you ever just like had that moment where time just kind of stops and it stands still? Like the world's moving around you and everything, everybody's doing other things, but this massive life-changing thing happened to you. Um, that moment where time kind of stands still, you're like in shock. And it's difficult to like think and your emotions are just kind of like in are, are kind of like paralyzed almost that moment. If you can think about a time when maybe you had that, um, that is what a lot of people are experiencing in the hospital when they see these life changing things unfold for themselves or their loved ones. So if you can kind of, understand like, whoa, they're not in this mental place where they can have regular conversation. And what I'm saying, they're going to retain, or they're going to really understand. Like if you're in that shock phase, and someone explains something complex, like neuro things, right, or complex medical stuff, especially to people who are lay people and don't deal with medical stuff at all. Or if there are lay people who not only don't like medical stuff, but get really freaked out and nauseous and nervous around any medical things, you add all that together. It's very difficult to have like a therapeutic back and forth where they're able to verbalize what they're thinking and feeling and you're able to provide that. What matters in these moments really is more than anything is presence, non-judgmental um, uh, interaction, not expecting them um, to tell you how they feel exactly because maybe they're like so paralyzed by it they can't even verbalize it. So just being there, um, validating experiences and emotions and hey, you don't have to be brave. You know, you want to be brave for your level. You don't got to be brave for me. I'm your nurse. You're okay with me. I use a safe space. Um, you know, it's not this transactional, what do you need? Let me get it for you. Okay, bye. But just kind of just being there and, and, and being present, I think is really important. Um, 
If it's a very serious situation, you know, the person that I really love to bring in is the chaplain. And people tend to assume you have to be a Christian um, that identifies with a specific faith to really utilize a chaplain. But something a lot of people don't realize are hospital chaplains actually are trained um, to support people through crises. So um, they can be such a wonderful, like, presence to be there to, hey, how are you doing? What can I help you with? Um, kind of thing. Like, they're great. I've had experiences where I've had families really in a tough situation, and um, they didn't know what the best decision was going to be. And um, the chaplain happened to be rounding. I wasn't smart enough at that time to <laughs> to call the chaplain, but she was rounding and she just went in and checked on them and processed some of the decision making. So what can really be helpful is like, they've just been told all this information and it's very difficult for them to synthesize it and come to a conclusion and make a decision, especially if it's a decision that is going to be life or death for someone or really impact somebody else. So having a third party there, that's not maybe the nurse or the doctor or their loved other loved ones um, in the room, but to sit down and say, here's Okay, let me hear it. Make sure I understand what you're saying. X is going on with this person. Their underlying belief system is this. What decision do you think would align with, you know, asking those questions to help guide their thought processes, not to tell them the right answer, but to facilitate thinking it through for themselves so they can come to the right answer for the whatever that unique answer is going to be for that family. Or maybe it's not coming to an answer. It's just what just happened and processing it. And, you know, you're feeling this, you saw this, I'm and just having someone there to validate emotions like, wow, I can't believe you just went through that. Like I've had a situation where, you know, I was, um, I can't remember if I was in the, I was in the cardiac ICU, floated there. And, um, you know, the, the patient was at home, was down at home. They did CPR for like 30 minutes at home before this EMS got there and was able to bring him in and got like a, you know, a cabbage, like an emergent cabbage. And I can't remember everything else. There might've been anoxic brain injury. I can't remember, but like this daughter is sitting there like retelling me that she did CPR on her father for 30 minutes with someone else switching off. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, I can't, like side note, like I didn't say this to her, but like I can't imagine doing CPR on my own dad. Like I would do it in the moment because it would be need need to be done. I can't imagine that. And then I can't imagine going to the hospital and seeing him on a ventilator with a new massive incision in his chest and chest tubes and like that's traumatic. So just even having somebody say like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. This is really hard. And this is very difficult and very traumatic. And I'm so sorry you've had to go through this um, because they can think like, I just went through all this. Uh, I guess I had, I just had to do it. And that's what I had to do. And they, they don't think about processing the emotions that go along with it. And, you know, just having that safe space there as a nurse to just validate that can be incredibly therapeutic. It's nothing crazy advanced or like you have to like do this advanced reflective listening, but just like, whoa. This is really hard, and I'm really sorry you had to go through this. Um, and, and communicating in an authentic, like, wow, kind of way, if that makes sense. Another thing, too, is when they're in that state, like I said, they're not, like, thinking necessarily super clear. And everybody manages their own emotions differently, and some people are very good at... Um, I don't want to say controlling their emotions, having power over them, you know, being able to acknowledge them and feel them and let them pass through them without it really um, too heavily guiding their actions. Because just because someone doesn't, isn't outwardly showing emotion doesn't mean they're not actively repressing them. Like I've seen very traumatic things go down and then like that should elicit a very big emotional response in someone and they're very stoic. Um, and, but I, likewise, I've seen the opposite where they're very overt with their emotions. And some of that can be cultural. Some of that can be just how that person has learned to relate to their emotions. Um, 
But saying all that, you may have someone who is not in the best state or in or having control or awareness of their like reflect like sending their emotions like there might be like trying to take them out on you and it's your fault or they're mad at you or they're screaming. They're really not mad at you. They're mad at the situation. But you're just the closest person there and they're, you're not their family member that they've got to deal with when they leave the hospital, they're never going to see you again, right? Like you're the, you're the safe space to take it out on, right? Um, my encouragement in those situations, because I've certainly been the receiver of that, especially working in critical care, is to not take that stuff personally. Remember, they're going through some crazy stuff, but like there's a line there. You don't want to let them go nuts. You, you need to have some boundaries too. Like, hey, I get you're going through something really rough right now. I'm here to, I'm here to support you, but please don't curse at me, Okay. You know, and then, but if you have someone who's continuing to do that, that's when you call security and you say, Hey, this is a, there's a way, a certain way we got to act here. And I understand you're going through some crazy stuff and this is really tough and I want to support you, but we need to have a mutual, not only respect, but I need to be able to be safe taking care of your pay, your loved one or whatever it is. I think here's, here's my, my mental picture I like for this. I want you to picture that person who's kind of losing it. Um, you are like this firmly rooted tree in the ground, right? You're firmly rooted and you've got lots of branches and leaves and they're emotional. Oh, I don't want to, I outburst, but I don't want to say outburst because that sounds childish because, but that's not what I mean it to be, but their kind of emotional release is mere wind rustling through your leaves. Let it pass through, but you're going to stand firm and you're not going to take in what they're saying as truth to you or as who you are, that's someone letting out some steam that they, for whatever reason, need to right now, but don't internalize it, okay? Let it pass through. Let the wave go. Um, if you need to say something in the moment, go ahead and say it to maintain standing firm, but also caring uh, so that you can, you know, feel safe and respected in your own work environment. Um and that ultimately results in better care and, you know, and sometimes people need that boundary almost like um, you think about like the like kid who's like losing it, but they need or they're doing things they're not supposed to do, but they need that boundary. They need to know, hey, I get that you're experiencing this, but we can't do that. All right. Like that's too much. Let's chill out a little bit or let's figure out a different way to do, deal with this but we can't do X, Y, Z, if that makes sense. People really appreciate when you're really direct and kind, but, um, and you're not beating around the bush and unclear. And they're like, okay, so does this mean he's dying or not? I don't understand. Can you, you know, they just, they just want to know definitively. And sometimes it can be very scary to say the definitive statement. But if you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that this is the right thing, it is your duty to communicate that honestly and caring in a, in a caring way. Um, now, hopefully if there's any like life or death stuff, the physician is the one who is um, breaking that um, news to them. But sometimes it's not always, you know, sometimes you're the first one or that they encounter and sometimes, you know, so uh, the more direct and caring you can be, the better kind of, rip the band-aid in a sense. Don't slowly pull it off um, as hard as it can be. They can appre they appreciate being direct and they it's not like you're kind of toying with, well, there might be hope and actually no, 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 no. no just, just clearly say what's going on. They they appreciate and need that, even if you're worried that it's not gonna feel so hot. Um you also don't want to provide false hope, just wanting to be positive. Like I've seen nurses and I've done this myself where I have a terrible patient situation in front of me and I am talking to them and they just, you can tell they're clinging for something positive. And I, if you just pick the one tiny little insignificant thing, well, their white blood cell count went, you know, is one better. Like that turns into false hope and it's not actually an accurate picture and that actually does a disservice and can actually undo some of the work maybe the medical team has done in educating them and understanding how bad things are right now. So really um, don't recognize in yourself if you're like, oh, I really just want them to have some good news. Make sure that it's accurate 
And it's not like you have this incredibly terrible picture and you're picking out this one little thing that's actually kind of insignificant to the overall picture just to make it them feel better. Um, honesty and providing an accurate picture is the most loving and caring thing that we can do, even if it doesn't seem like it. All right, guys. So that concludes our episode on... Um, difficult conversations. Make sure you check out freshrn.com, sign up for my email list and check out our courses. We'll see you next week. Yeah.